So look what I got today. <laughs> I went to the grocery store and I couldn't resist but get this little guy because technically we are moving into fall. It's September. I couldn't believe it. I felt like uh, we were just in the middle of the summer and now it feels like fall's on its way and technically it is. It's going to be coming at the end of this month. I'm so excited because I don't know about you, but I am a fall girl. I love everything there is about fall. Everything from the pumpkin lattes to pumpkin spice cookies, pumpkin ice cream, all the bad stuff, including campfires, sitting around the fire with family and friends and s'mores and laughing and thanksgiving and wearing sweaters and scarves and just being cozy hot chocolate oh all of it all of it's wonderful the cooler weather where i can finally get back outside and hike because especially here in florida i can't hike in the summer it's so hot and so humid but now with the coming of fall, I can get back out and I'm so excited. I'm so, so excited. So I thought when I saw this guy, what better way to celebrate and help us to get ready for fall, but to do a little watercolor study of this little guy. Should be fairly simple. And so if you wanna follow along, get your own at some point and come back and watch the video. Um, maybe you'll be inspired to do one yourself or if nothing today, maybe just watching me paint will help get you into the fall mood yourself. So let's get started. So if you watched the video where I was talking about the basics of drawing and doing classical drawings, I use those same principles when I'm trying to draw something. And even with a watercolor, now you can go straight in, but I just feel better if I can get a basic drawing in very lightly. I make my marks and then I push it back with a little bit of a rubbing eraser eventually. So trying to get the basic envelope of what I'm seeing with this pumpkin. Doesn't look very pumpkin-y right now, but it's very, very light. So. Scooby's having his final Scooby snack before bedtime. <laughs> All right, well, there's the basic shape, I feel. All right, so now let's take that rubbing eraser, do a little bit of cleaning by stretching it out, pulling on it a bit. That's pretty good. Now I'm gonna push it back a little bit. So I can still see my guidelines. I know what's going on, but they're not gonna show through if I do this step. So I just wanna try a few colors here. And what I like to do is I like to use a little scrap piece of paper and put it up next to my subject. And that helps you gauge what you're actually going for. So I just do that and then I put it right next to my subject. All right, let's just go in for that first initial wash. And I want it to bleed a bit because I want it to be a little bit more 
loose and watercolorish this time. So we're going to embrace some of those effects. And then we'll have to let it dry with this first color going down. And places where I'd like for it to be not so loose, might wanna dab it a bit. And I just have it on a white background, so it's going to be very, very, very um, just restricted to the colors of the actual pumpkin itself and all the values as it turns away from its light source. All right, so. It's almost dry, or it's basically dry. So I just want to now start moving into that, those secondary colors that I'm kind of seeing on the darker side. Now what's kind of tricky about the pumpkin is that um, because the way these ridges are arranged, the um, the form almost looks angled, so. so I'm going to start off very lightly and it might have to go back and do it again. And like I said, I'm not, I'm not what I would call a, I would not call myself a watercolor artist. I am just an artist and I use various medias. So these, the way I do things are not like stereotypical watercolorist ways, I feel. And I did get a lot of looseness that I wasn't necessarily anticipating here. So this is just a little bit of that purple with a bit of Payne's Gray that I'm using for my shadow, for that um, core shadow as it turns away from the light into the shadow side of the pumpkin. And, and then for my shadow itself, even though I wanted to start off with a warmth, I wanted it to have a very loose feeling to it. Um, it's not black. It's very dark, but it's like a dark gray with a, a very warm dark gray because it's reflecting the light of the pumpkin onto the paper. So, let's see what we can do to get that kind of warmth that we need. Or we might have to just go with a, um, a few passes.
even the shadow itself has like a unique edge to it. I feel like I want to get this warmth in here with this little punch of this pumpkin f color that um, it's like six four one, I think. Let's see. No, it's six four nine. Six four nine on the chart. All right. And I want to mix that with. A bit of the ivory black is what I'm using right now because um, technically I thought I had Payne's gray on on here but it's not Payne's gray it's ivory black so but it's a lightened up version of that I want to be careful because I don't want to lose my edge here and I don't want it to start bleeding into my um, pumpkin itself I wanted it to look bleedy up here, but not so much bleedy into the pumpkin. And we'll probably go back with another another pass of that too. I think it did seem to um Let's see, I don't really want it that. Yeah, okay. And what's kind of weird is that uh, about these shadows is that technically there's a, it's almost like a, mm, what would you call it? Like a, an edge where it kind of fades into a secondary level. edge to dry unless I take it over there to use the hair dryer with it I I'm going to work on the stem a little bit working on the shadow side of the stem Kind of feel like maybe what I like to do is possibly something between dry brush, dry brushing um, a watercolor and the wet on wet technique. I just keep playing with it until I get what I want as a result.
work on some of these crevices that the pumpkin has where the light is not hitting that crevice so some of them are very deep and dark where the form has drastically turned away from the light and then other places it's only slightly insinuated like right here I want to do it very lightly and like that but you can see how I think that the, the form is turning fairly well now it's starting to look more like a pumpkin. <laughs> now while you can use a masking fluid to block out spots where you want the highlights to be. I like to just use gouache myself because gouache technically is a relative. It's very similar um, to uh, watercolors itself. It's just more opaque and not translucent. And, um, and I like it because I can just touch in a little bit of, uh, of the white and it's nice and strong and it complements. But we're getting closer to our goal here. I think, I think I'm almost done here. The only thing I want to do, because now I'm getting the possibility of a backwash here, so I want to be careful. So I want to make sure I keep some of that warmth into that shadow that I wanted. Being careful about this edge right here because there was too much water there.
Okay. I think that's it. I think uh, the only thing else I could say is that maybe the highlights and maybe a few more details on that stem. Once I add in those, um, those highlights, it will really turn and look roundish. Don't want this too dark, but definitely darker on one side. I just may not want it too dark. All right. So this is the gouache I've been using. Just some. Studio, Peblo Studio Gouache. Um, I don't use any other color in this brand other than this white gouache. Um, it's permanent. It's not, um, it's not uh, acrylic, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think it is. Anyways, this is what I use because it's inexpensive and um, it worked well. I just use it straight out of the tube. It's a pretty big tube too. And often I'll just do it straight like this and just pop in a few of those highlights that I want. Just the tiniest bit on my tip. And I just lightly pop those in. And the reason why I do this too is like, I don't use white watercolor because white watercolor typically, um, typically white watercolor um, is it's too opaque. It's too, I mean, it's too translucent. And it just fades in where I feel like sparingly using this, it's more opaque. And like I said, it's complementary to um, watercolor. Just a touch more. right about there and sometimes I'll just pop it in it's kind of it's not like a big blob I think about that texture that the um, the skin of the pumpkin has and so it may be kind of dotty like that okay is that it? Am I happy? Hmm. Am I happy? Do I like it? Mm, I think so. Yeah, I think so. I do right now. Yeah. And when I look at it on the camera, it looks even better. Let's see. <laughs> Here, let me zoom you in. So. The only thing I think I lost a little bit of my my darkened area right there. I want to put that in a little bit more. Being very careful.
create that core shadow that I was talking about earlier. And pop in a little bit of warmth. And yeah. Okay. Cool. Awesome. So anyways, this is what it looks like up really close and personal. As long as the camera gets it right, <laughs> focuses correctly. So you can see how the core shadows there, those pops of, of the gouache, how it makes it shine, the warmth that we left in the shadow here, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So one thing I thought about doing, now that we're out of the sketchbook series, um, not that I'm not going to be doing more sketchbook stuff, I am. I thought that every once in a while I might do a watercolor um, and if I feel like it's good enough and um, I might pop it into my Etsy shop. This is an extra way to support this channel. Tell me if you're interested in that um, and uh, you can leave the comment down below in the comment section and um, let me know how you're getting ready for the fall, what you love about the fall if you love it or if you hate it. Um, and if nothing, leave me an emoji to let me know that you got this far in the video. And I hope this, uh, demonstration today was helpful and I will see you next time. Annyeong!